Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As always I'm back with another exciting video on one of the most untouched topics by many. Quiet. The NSA story. And the history of NSA. The origins and the activities of the NSA are shrouded in secrecy. It has to be so because if everyone knew everything there would be no need for an NSA, right? The US government did not reveal the existence of the NSA as late as 1975. So the question is, when was the NSA incorporated? So NSA during World War I. While the world credits President Harry Truman for officially incorporating the NSA in 1952, it has been working clandestinely since the First World War. The US Congress set up a code and cipher decryption unit, also known as the Cable and Telegraph Section or the Cipher Bureau, three weeks after the US declared war on Germany in 1917 during World War I. Though it did not have any direct Congress authorization, the unit took an active part in the intelligence gathering and deciphering of telegraphic codes during the World War. After the war, the Cypher Bureau, also known as the Black Chamber, functioned as the US first peacetime cryptanalytic organization. However, the prime activity was the same. In example, breaking other nations' communication channels. Though the unit was successful, the US Secretary of State, Henry Stimson, shut down the agency in 1929 by stating gentlemen are not supposed to read each other mails. So NSA during World War II. And World War II saw the creation of a signal intelligence service to intercept and decipher enemy communication. This unit worked under the Armed Forces Security Agency, which was tasked to tap defense communication and electronic intelligence activities. However, the move was unsuccessful because the agency failed to coordinate with civilian agencies such as the CIA and the FBI. Hence, President Harry Truman set up an investigation panel to probe the agency performance, leading to the redesignation of the unit as NSA in 1952. So let us see the role of the NSA since its reincarnation. So the NSA played a critical role in the Vietnam War by providing information and evidence of North Vietnamese attack on the USS Maddox. While this responsibility was a classical wartime strategy, the secret operation Minaret was akin to eating below the belt. Minaret tapped and monitored the phone communication of people who criticized the Vietnam War. This included famous people, including Martin Luther King, Senator Howard De Baker, and Frank Church, other civil rights activities, and prominent U.S. journalists. Also, the NSA was renowned for right typing U.S. citizens and intercepting international communication of anti-Vietnam War crusaders such as Dr. Benjamin Spock and Jane Fonda. The NSA used a secret filing system to track these individuals. This filing system was later destroyed in 1974. The NSA, the CIA and the FBI were subjected to various investigations of misuse of authority during President Nixon's regime. White House communications revealed that NSA helped intercept ephraudable evidence of Libyan involvement in the Berlin Discworld bombing in 1986. U.S. President Ronald Reagan cited the NSA intercepts as a justification for the U.S. bombing in Libya. The aftermath of the September 11 attack saw NSA developing and using new IT systems to deal with the innovative techniques used by terrorists. NSA developed FinThread, a technology containing advanced data mining capabilities. It also started using a privacy mechanism where the civilian's data was encrypted and its decryption required a warrant. Now, not everyone was supportive of the NSA's domestic and international spying activities. The disclosure of former NSA contractor Edward Snowden are in the public domain. Besides, the U.S. Court of Appeals ruled that the NSA surveillance project unlawful in 2020. 
So the question now veers towards NSA's operational procedures and mission. And what is NSA up to these days? And we shall discuss these aspects before exploring fascinating facts about the NSA that everyone should know. So what does the NSA do? What are its mission and objective? And NSA has three divisions to cater to its domestic and international responsibilities. The first one is Global Access Operation, GAO, the vision for collection and assimilation of data overseas. The second division is Special Source Operation, SSO division, for domestic collection. The third one is Tailored Access Operation, TAO division, for hacking operation. And NSA conducts various eavesdropping missions that include tapping telephone calls, radio broadcasting signals, the internet and other intercepted communications. NSA's mission, including tapping diplomatic, military, confidential or secret, and sensitive government communications. And the NSA specializes in specific discipline known as SIGNET, Signals Intelligence. The agency has a reputation for physically bugging electronic systems to achieve its worldwide mass data collection objective. Have you heard of Stuxnet? A lot of experts suspected NSA to be the primary brain behind this cyber warfare attack on Iranian nuclear plants. If you didn't see it, I did a video about it, so I will leave it the, the link in the description. And NSA does not conduct human source intelligence gathering publicly. Instead, it supports other governmental organizations that do not have the authority to engage in such activities independently. We can describe NSA's activities in one line. They generate foreign intelligence insights and leverage technological and cybersecurity advantage to strengthen the national defense and secure national security systems. So what are some interesting facts about the NSA? And what do you usually expect of a federal security agency to do? The general thought is that the agency act as a watchdog to prevent attacks on the nation's sovereignty from external and internal sources. The NSA fulfills these responsibilities, but overdoses them at times. These interesting facts about the NSA threw light on these matters. So some interesting facts. Do you know that NSA can legally monitor all domestic calls? Truth, the information generally sought is the location, data, call duration, time, and unique identifiers. Whether NSA records the conversation is not confirmed. If you think going offline can throw the NSA off your back, you are in for a major disappointment because NSA can hack offline computers. Besides, NSA can direct you to mirror sites and record your activities. No data can escape the NSA's watch before it can steal the Windows uh, crash reports. The NSA throws the attorney-client privilege right out of the, the window. With all the power, authority, and capability to gather information, one expects the NSA to be an expert at preventing terrorist attack. Surprisingly, the NSA conviction rate is absurdly poor, though President Barack Obama declared that NSA helped throughout 54 terrorist attempts. Sources reveal that NSA has been instrumental in preventing only one Al-Qaeda plot to conduct a terrorist attack in the U.S. The NSA has the history of violating court orders and leaked audit reports offer detail of nearly 2,776 such violations in a single year. Another strong capability is that the NSA has powerful face recognition software. Its program can determine location with precision by comparing spy satellite photos with intercept personal photos. The NSA has the ability to take on the dark web. It has target people who use Tor the Onion Router browser. The NSA regularly spies on political officials belonging to the US and other countries. They collaborate with the CSEC, Communication Security Establishment of Canada, ASD, Australian Signal Directorate, and GCHQ, Government Communication Headquarters in Britain. Relation between NSA, FBI, and CIA. And have you ever uh, been confused between the NSA, CIA, and the FBI? What's the function does each of them perform, actually? So you have every right to be confused because the activities of all these three agencies seem similar. But there are clear distinctions between their function. 
Would you like to know the difference between these uh, federal agencies? Of course, right? Because that's why I'm raising it. So the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, is primarily a law enforcement agency responsible for providing security and domestic intelligence. You can say that the FBI is the premier counterintelligence, counterterrorism, and criminal investigate organization of the United States. The Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and the National Security Agency, NSA, are intelligence gathering agencies without law enforcement authority. While the CIA and NSA function seems to overlap, they differ in many ways. The CIA focuses on human intelligence, UMINT, and uses field personnel and desk executives for intelligence gathering. It is primarily a foreign intelligence gathering service agency. The NSA, on the other hand, specializes in global collection monitoring and information processing for domestic and international counterintelligence purposes. The NSA uses signal intelligence, or SIGNET, and intercepts digital communications and electronic data. Another distinguished feature between these three federal agencies is their priority. The FBI prioritizes enforcing criminal laws and protecting defending the country. The CIA focuses more on the counterintelligence and counterterrorism, where the NSA concentrates on the counterintelligence activities that protect the US communication network. However, all three agencies report to the Director of National Intelligence. Besides, the FBI reports to the Department of Justice. The FBI, CIA, and the NSA work closely together in various matters, like sharing intelligence that help uncover leads in criminal investigation or address situations requiring law enforcement. Does the NSA carry out any security emissions? And the NSA restricts its responsibilities to coordinating signal intelligence elements to ensure national security. The NSA helps those government organizations prevented by law from carrying out activities like signal intercepting and collecting data. The agency has a specific co-located organization, the CSS, Central Security Service, to facilitate coordination between them and other U.S. defense cryptanalysis components. The NSA does not get directly involved in war like conflicts or indulge in law enforcement activities. Their prime responsibility is to collect as much intelligence and evidence required for helping the US defense forces fight the wars. So if you ask, does NSA carry out any security missions? The answer has to be yes and no simultaneously. They help security agencies fight terrorism and enforce the law, but not take part in them actively. Controversies. And the NSA has been embroiled in various controversies since the unit was set up. The agency existence was a significant controversy because no one knew it existed until around 1975, even though the NSA was functional since 1952 and even before that under different names. So people used to refer the NSA as a no such agency instead of national security agencies. Besides, NSA has been part of various controversies where the agency and its officials have acted beyond their jurisdictions and caused problems. And let us discuss some controversies that have strid the honestness. The first and maybe the, the famous one is NSA and Snowden. And the NSA and Edward Snowden controversy has grabbed headline globally because it exposes NSA surveillance programs and intrusions into people's privacy. And Edward Snowden worked as an American intelligence contractor that was not very happy with how the NSA was encroaching into innocent people's lives and gathering immense amounts of emails, web histories, phone calls, and other personal communications without their knowledge. So he decided to become a whistleblower and expose the NSA's eye endness. And the U.S. Court of Appeals has ruled NSA surveillance policies unlawful. Snowden disclosure may form the subject of a new video blog. Let's see. 
Second is privacy controversies. So one of the most significant uh, privacy controversies involved the NSA and the PRISM surveillance program that Edward Snowden exposed to the public. And PRISM is a joint program under which the NSA, FBI and CIA can introduce into any individual privacy and read international emails, chat and internet calls without obtaining a warrant. And people use various channels, right? Like Facebook, Apple, Skype, Google, etc. The communication with their loved ones overseas. And PRISM allows these agencies to monitor these communication channels in the name of national security. Though the government insisted that the surveillance program targets foreigners, it is not entirely true because it serves as a backdoor into U.S. Uh, citizen private communication, a fourth amendment violation on a massive scale. Third, surveillance. And the George Bush administration started the wiretapping program after the September 11 attacks. This controversial law, known as Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, allows the government to intercept, monitor, and collect any international communication information, regardless of whatever it has anything to do with national security. The NSA and the other counterintelligence agencies started using this law indiscriminately to arrest as bon, uh, bona fide citizens, such as uh, journalists, university researchers, or business people who might have information bearing remote connections with the foreign affairs. The NSA indicated that it would end the surveillance program, but continues to violate U.S. citizen internet privacy rights by misusing this law. Fourth, floating civil rights protection. And the mine art operation in the 1970s targeted civil rights activists like Martin Luther King and Whitney uh, Young uh, because they had expressed their displeasure at the human rights violation during the U.S. Vietnam War. The NSA tracked other Vietnam War uh, critics like Muhammad Ali and, and journalists Tom Wicker and Art Buchwald. Besides, the NSA has admitted to monitoring the overseas phone calls of U.S. Senators Howard Baker and Frank Church. Certain unnamed NSA officials shockingly revealed that the mine out program was disruptable, if not outright illegal. Another interesting fact you may not know is that the NSA building the biggest spy center in the U.S. Or does it already have one? The NSA has the biggest spy center in the USA at the Utah Data Center. This massive data repository is the first intelligence community comprehensive national security initiative data center that supports the community's effort to monitor information assets and strengthen and protect the nation. This $1.5 billion facility is spread over 1 million square feet in Bluffordale. It houses more than 100,000 square feet mission critical tier 3 data center that qualifies as the world's first facility to gather and store Utahbyte. Wrapping it up. Considering the threat the U.S. faces from terrorism, especially after the September 11 attacks, this type of data collection might be seen as a necessary because you never know from where a terror idea can conceive. Yes, I agree. That it's against the basic fundamental rights. With that, I conclude this video on the NSA. I hope you like this video. Feel free to let, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do subscribe if you like the, the video and I will continue to bring more interesting stuff like this. The unit then. So take care and bye bye.